Hello and welcome uh, at KC2. This is uh, the Purpose Rwanda Show and I am Levi Mutangachuro and I'm your host today. In case it's your first time to tune in to this particular show, I just want to let you know that Purpose Rwanda intends to create a positive, purposeful and addiction-free generation. We do that by inviting uh, several guests of different backgrounds to tell us the clear steps of being that purpose person who is uh, uh, purposeful, who is positive and of course addiction-free. Today we'll be discussing about taking responsibility and initiative. My guest today is uh, an entrepreneur who is passionate about servant leadership. He's also been uh, training and supporting uh, entrepreneurs for over a decade in both East and West African countries. He's also currently working as a senior coordinator in engineering uh, talent development for Andela, a global tech company based in New York. Thank you very much, Jean Makara, for joining us today. Thank you so much, Lavi. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Yes, maybe I talked about who you are, but you can, of course, introduce more if, in case you think there is something I forgot. <laughs> in in case, case I believe there's mm. something you forgot. Well, I think you did a fantastic job. Mm. And uh, what I would also say is that I'm Rwandan. Yes. <laughs> I'm a Rwandan citizen and very proud to be. Yes. And uh, I think probably the biggest title Mm. I have is that I'm a disciple of Christ, mm. and that uh, underscores everything else that I do yes. in this life. Mm. Yes, and of course, you're that purposeful, of course. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, yeah. A purpose-driven life, uh, maybe to interject. I remember in 2005, 2006, mm -hmm. a certain uh, book mm. by Rick Warren, Yes. A purpose-driven life. Yes. Uh, met me by, by, by faith, I believe, mm. and my life uh, has been transformed by uh, it ever since. Yes. Uh, Maybe talking about the entrepreneurship part of yours, mm. how did it come? How did it come about? When did you enter yes. this field? Well, I would say um, when I was in uh, secondary school, mm -hmm. post-primary school, that was in, uh, this is a long way back, probably in 2002. Mm -hmm. I was uh, very young, of course. My brother needed some money. He was uh, studying in South Africa, mm. and he needed some money to pay off his, uh, his uh, I think, student loans and stuff. Mm. So he brought back some commodities. And he said, instead of you constantly knocking on my door mm -hmm. for pocket money, mm. why don't you show me, what, you know, uh, show me that you can actually do something? Mm -hmm. So that's how I started selling. So mm. I, pro I got passport books. This way, passport uh, covers. Mm -hmm. Uh, we see them now everywhere. They have the African continent mm, on yes, the cover. Yes, yes. And um, so, I mean, I was probably the first person to sell those in, mm. in Kigali. Mm. But uh, yeah, so that's how it started. And yes. um, in West Africa, I also had the opportunity to, um, to work with startups, mm -hmm. briefly, of course. Mm -hmm. But I think what really exposed me to taking initiative, as you were mentioning um, earlier, mm -hmm was the chance I had to work for a, for a starting organization then, that was the United, uh, U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. That was in 2010. At the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, I didn't have a job description. Mm -hmm. I didn't have an office. Mm -hmm. I didn't have equipment. But uh, I was just given an opportunity to serve. Mm -hmm. And I took hold of that opportunity. And in about uh, six months, I had, uh, I had established my own office, and, it, um, and this came through taking initiative, getting out there, meeting people, yes. uh, putting yourself in different events, trying mm. to network with business uh, uh, leaders and so on and so forth. Mm. So I think that's where it came from. Mm. So when I came to Rwanda naturally in 2014, 2013, mm. uh, because I started my first company in 2014, mm -hmm. I said, well, well, this is another opportunity. Yes. I need, uh, I need to find a problem to solve mm. and in the process, you know, uh, get an income. Mm. Yeah. Okay, great. That's a, a very good and inspiring story, of course. And uh, coming back to our topic of the day, we are talking about taking responsibility and initiative, mm. especially to people who might be um, addicted to drugs. There are several things that one can be addicted to. You can be addicted, addicted to drugs, you can be addicted to uh, alcohol, you can be addicted to sex, and so forth. So 
today we are discussing how it all starts, like breaking that chain. Mm -hmm. It starts with taking initiative and taking responsibility. How do you explain that? Well, thank you so much. Um, again, it's really a great opportunity for me to talk about this mm. because in my personal life, I have uh, had to um, deal with relatives, friends, mm. Mm. who are going through the same process. Uh, and it's a tough one. It's a yeah. tough journey. Mm. It's a tough journey, but only when you are fighting alone. Mm. Uh, when you're fighting alone, it's, it's almost an impossible task. Mm -hmm. uh, but thank God that uh, Rwanda, even speaking from where we are, mm -hmm. Rwanda has come a long way. And I think we have quite a number of institutions, mm -hmm. quite a number of um, government bodies and other NGOs mm -hmm. working together mm -hmm. uh, in partnerships to, to eradicate um, uh, addiction. Yeah. Now, what are, you talked about the origins of, of these addictions. Yeah. It's, it's important to note that... Um, there are various reasons, mm. many reasons why a person may develop an addiction. Yes. Some of these are psychological. Mm. Somebody faces a problem in their emotional life. They yes. lose a parent or mm. they, they really grow up without a parent in the first place. Mm. And, or they meet some sort of traumatic event. Uh, they're exposed okay. to wrong material, to yes. wrong environment. Mm. But whatever the cause mm. has triggered this specific addic addiction, mm. It's important to understand that, uh, yes, it's bad. Yes, it can be difficult at times, extremely difficult. Mm. But it's important to understand that it's possible mm. to break out of that addiction. Yeah. It's possible. I've seen it over and over and over. And I was myself addicted to cigarettes mm. uh, at, a, at a given point in time in my life. Mm. And um, it took me a while. Mm. It took uh, support. For me, it was a religious institution, mm. a church to be specific, mm. that community, that support, uh, support system mm. that I found in place. And um, that's, that's how really I got out of it, gradually, of mm. course. Mm. So taking responsibility says what? It simply means you are here. Mm. Things happened to you. Mm -hmm. But one way or another, you had some sort of participation to arrive at where you are in terms of addiction, yes. you know? So usually either the first time you're exposed to, to, to this, the circumstance or other times that it happens. The same way you participate mm. in getting deeper and deeper into these, uh, Addiction. into these addictions, mm. it is the same energy mm. it will take, mm. the same consistency. Mm. Because you don't get addicted in one day. Mm. You, don't, you don't even get addicted in just one week. It, mm. It's something, it's repetitive and uh, habits building kind of actions mm. that usually triggers in the long run some mental uh, conditioning. Mm. The same can be broken through applying yourself repetitively. Mm. And of course, uh, maybe this is something we can talk about later, but uh, for this to take place, you need accountability partners. Mm. You need a support system, okay? We need, uh, sometimes it's peer-to-peer -peer mm. kind of mentorship, mm. but uh, even better is an institutionalized measure, something like Papas Rwanda. Mm. They're doing a great work in Kigali uh, and across the country, really. Mm. And so working in partnership mm. with these diverse institutions, mm. understand you're going to take the first step mm. to freedom. It's possible. You have what it takes. Most importantly, you deserve the change that you desire to see in your life. Yes. Maybe allow me to take you back a little bit mm -hmm. on your personal story. It's well understood when it comes from a personal experience. Mm -hmm. Like, when was it in your life that you became addicted to cigarettes? How did it come about? How did it come Maybe about? before we go on how you yes. broke that addiction, <laughs> how did it come about? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, well, uh, an interesting question. I was in, um, I think uh, in 2000, 2001 there, but maybe 2000, late 2000, mm. late 2001, the government assigns you, when you finish a tronc commun, this is called tronc commun. Yes. Uh, that's the O level, level, ordinary level. Yes. You are assigned. You are, you are sent to um, a, level. a school up country. Mm. So I was, I was, I went to farthermost area in a place called it's in Bumba back then, mm. very far, close to the border, mm. and I didn't know anyone. 
Uh, it was, uh, I wasn't even very comfortable then in, in boarding school and, uh, and everything. So I met a group of friends, some of them from Kigali, of course, uh, and these guys were smoking. They were smoking cigarettes. They were smoking marijuana. And uh, before I know it, I liked this new thing called Inhori. In, in in, in yeah? And it's, I don't know how it came, really. Mm. One person says, you know, try it, try it, try it, and see. So I gave it a try. You meet often, and that peer pressure puts you in a situation. You cough the first time, and you, you want to vomit, but then you get used to it. And it was a cold place, so we, we gave ourselves a bit of um, excuse. Excuse yeah. uh, to say, well, you know, it's cold. You know, I need, let, let me let me get this. Let me get. And before you know it, I was a full blown smoker. I was smoking uh, by myself. I never, I didn't need help anymore. Mm. And it was about years later, almost five years later, that I really then I joined the new church, and uh, they had a department that was in charge of the youth, and that's how. I received counseling I, um, through, of course, uh, prayer and counseling, how religious church systems work. And it was how that's how I broke free from, from, my, from my addiction. Mm. Then what, maybe, uh, what, what, what triggered the mm. change? Or before we even go to that, mm. what do you regret? In those five years of being addicted, mm. what do you regret? What do I regret? Mm. Uh, I don't know. If I, say, I, think, I would think regret is a big word, but um, one thing is for sure, is that I, I didn't benefit me in any way. It didn't benefit me, and I'm glad I quit before it gave me a disease. Uh, if I, uh, the worst part maybe was that some people, because in high school, uh, there was a time I became leaders at different levels in high school, so a lot of people looked up to me even then, and so I know maybe a number of people started smoking because they saw yes. Jean Makara yeah. uh, smoking. Yeah. And for that, probably that's, that's what I regret the most. Mm. Um, yeah, then maybe as we go to the process of, I mean, being free from that addiction, mm -hmm. was it that easy <laughs> like to become addiction free? Did you yes. reach a mm. point whereby you say, it's now two days since mm. I did not smoke, mm. the third day I smoke, then mm -hmm. four days, like what, how yes. was that process of being free? It wasn't organized, it wasn't, um, it wasn't really organized. I think for people it's a different uh, experience. Mm -hmm. For me, it wasn't some structured process. Mm -hmm. It wasn't organized. In fact, I think the, most, the thing that helped him the most was, I, because I joined a new environment, most of my friends kept a bit away. Mm -hmm. They say, you know, he has changed. Mm -hmm. He's not the, the, the one we He's knew. not the guy we knew. The guy we knew is uh, much cooler. He yeah. parties and, he, you know. Yeah. So, but then, what effectively what that happened, was, what that created was space between me and them. Yes. And uh, that peer pressure, first and foremost, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, it kind of dwindled away. Mm -hmm. But also... I was lucky that after a few, a few months, maybe just a year, mm. I traveled abroad for school. Mm. So and I was completely uh, mm. away from this. So I, I'm thinking peer pressure mm. is something I needed to get away from. Mm. And I'm not saying somebody should decide tomorrow to, to pack their bags and leave. But I'm thinking mm. that is, for me, certainly something that helped me mm. uh, come along with. But mm. this being said, mm. I have a couple of friends mm -hmm. whose lives were really, really impacted negatively, of course, mm -hmm. by, uh, by the, the, the consumption of marijuana. Mm -hmm. And um, so it really broke my heart. Some of these guys went to study abroad the same time I went, mm -hmm. and they never came back with a degree. Mm -hmm. uh, their families were heartbroken. Uh, I even had a friend who passed not too long ago mm -hmm. of overdose. So that's... Uh, that's um, yeah, a good friend of mine. So again, so that, that's a scar. That's an emotional scar. Uh, mm. And this is the reason why really I, um, I come, I really had to say yes to your invitation yes. because it's a really important uh, yes. topic to discuss. Yes, so. yes, yes, I really agree. And uh, maybe the, the other question that what one would ask him or herself is, where do I start from? 
Mm. Like if I am consuming drugs, if I'm consuming marijuana, like mm -hmm. if I'm consuming alcohol, where do I start from? Mm. Like, yes. That's a good question, very important question. So mm. where do I start from? Mm. First and foremost, addiction is not a curse. Mm. I think this is something really important for young people and old alike, because addiction is, uh, it, it doesn't discriminate in age um, and or gender. Yeah. Uh, you know, you are not the worst person, because those feelings can really overtake you. Mm. Feelings of guilt, mm. uh, feelings of unworthiness, feelings of, um, uh, you know, feeling not, val you, you don't think you're as valuable, mm. a human being as the rest of society, mm. beating yourself up, feeling, as a, feeling like a failure. Yeah. So I would say, the first place to begin mm. is not to deny the reality. Mm. Accept and embrace the fact mm. that you have gone through what you've gone through in terms of addiction and that you need support. That's probably that's the biggest problem I've noticed mm. is that uh, because you are still trying to salvage some um, dignity, mm. some, some personal dignity. So what you do is usually try to deny mm. the reality yes. in terms of addiction. No, I'm not addicted. Mm. I just have this problem or real caring. But you know yourself. Mm. You know you have been doing this for the past 10 years, mm. for the past five years, past three years, mm. maybe longer than that. Mm. So you are not the person, you are not, the, I'm trying to say, as a person, it doesn't make you a bad person. Mm. Addiction doesn't make you a bad person. Mm. It simply gives you bad habits. Mm. So the first place is accept that yes. you need help. Mm. And the second step maybe, which really mm. comes right after, mm. is seek for any institution mm. or anyone mm. who, a professional most importantly, yes. who can uh, provide you with support mm. uh, towards, uh, towards uh, rehabilitation. Mm. Then you, you've, you've, you've touched a very important point that I want mm. us uh, to go to. What is the responsibility of the community, the community in helping these kind of people mm -hmm. to be addiction free? Well, what's the responsibility of the community? So now let's say this. <clears throat> Rwanda as a country, we've come a long way, as I said earlier. Mm. And, um, but where we are headed, there is a lot of work to be done. Mm. And I think Rwandans, most, more than anyone, understand mm. that the government itself mm. can't do everything. Mm. You know, mm. uh, that's not what has happened. The government can't work itself to create a transformation in society. Yeah. The community is extremely important because mm. these are our sons, mm. these are our daughters, these are our husbands and, and, and wives. Mm. These are our family members. Mm. And most importantly, these are minds mm. that will contribute to the development of our country. Yes. These are valuable human assets, human resources mm. for our country. Mm. And they're our family. These are potential leaders for tomorrow. Mm. Uh, these are entrepreneurs for tomorrow. Mm. These are people, the people Rwanda needs tomorrow. Mm. So if the community doesn't stand up together mm. to create some sort of, uh, you know, um, momentum, mm. to galvanize resources, mm. to bring people together mm. towards this cause, mm. then uh, the Rwanda we hope to, to see tomorrow mm. may, may just be a dream. Mm. Mm. Definitely. So, I mean, what, what now me as a person, I know that person who is addicted. And of course, maybe their family know them, their community know them. Do I have that, that responsibility? Am I, do I have to be concerned that I have to help this person? And where do I start from? Maybe it's me not judging them. It's mm -hmm. me hearing them, hearing their problem. The problem, yes, like, yes. where do I start from as yes, a person? Yes, yeah. I think actually you've, 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 uh, you've almost, you've answered like 50% of, mm. of the question already. Mm. And that is the biggest, one of the mistakes that we make, mm. I mean, I, I have made this in the past, and some, some people in my family too, mm. is pointing fingers. Mm. And uh, trying to, you know, trying to tell the person, look at you, look at the rest, look at you, the, you, you, your peers. Mm. Your peers are doing much better than you. Mm. 
Uh, why don't you become like, I remember I was a, a, a friend of mine who recently passed, unfortunately. Mm. The mother was constantly asking, why don't you become more like Jean? Like you went to the same school. Mm. He was your friend, he was your close friend. Mm. Why don't you become like him? Mm. And I, was, I would tell her, you know, that's not the best approach. Yes. The approach is just like I, you have a malaria mm. and you go to see the doctor. Mm. You have a headache, mm. you go and see a doctor. Mm. This person has a behavioral mm. uh, disease. You're looking at the symptoms. Mm. And this person can get help. Mm. Somebody can give them an aspirin, just a different kind of medication. Mm. So the first place is accept that this person is where they are mm. and they need help. Mm. Second thing is inform them mm. of the opportunity. For example, you said, you give yourself an example of yourself, for example, you are, you are aware of what Papa Sronda is doing. Mm. There is a heavy responsibility on your shoulders mm. as La Vie mm. to create awareness in the community, wherever you go. Yes. And uh, these images mm. that keep coming back to, you know, to your mind of the people you grew up with, mm. the terrible decadence that takes place in someone's life when they get hooked on these drugs, mm. these things will really stamp mm. your responsibility Mm. in fighting against addiction. Mm. So what do you do? Accept the person, don't shun them away, yes. bring them closer to you. Mm. And without judging, mm. propose. Mm. If you want support, yes. there is support. Mm. Yeah. In fact, and also most importantly, anonymity is important. Mm. Privacy, yes, privacy and anonymity, mm. I, I think is uh, mm. important. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And uh, maybe as you're an entrepreneur, very experienced in this mm. field of entrepreneurship, there are people who think that me being unemployed or not mm. having something to do is an excuse for me to do drugs. Yes. Do you agree with that? I certainly do not agree with that. Mm. I understand uh, people going through it. Mm. I understand the hopelessness mm. that um, can build in someone's mind mm. when you don't have a job, you don't have a source of income. Mm. It's a dark place to be. But drugs are your enemy. Mm. Drugs will never help you accomplish. I mean, drugs, the only thing drugs will do, mm. uh, I was listening to a comedian called Steve Harvey, mm, yes, recently Steve by Harvey. accident. Uh, Steve Harvey was saying that the people he started with, he started with a lot of great comedians, mm. most of them more talented than he was Yes, back in the 80s and 70s. Mm. And he said any of those comedians, mm. no matter how talented he was, mm. when they got started with, into drugs, yes. they never recovered from it. Their careers never, that's it. Basically, yes. their careers were ended mm. right on spot. Yes. So I understand that's where you are right now. Mm. But that's not a, a permanent place to be. Mm. So opportunities of business out there, don't you don't have to be extremely smart mm. to start a business. Mm. And you don't have a huge capital mm. to start a business. All you need is the willingness to start something. Yeah. And uh, business ideas don't come from a dream. I mean, some people maybe get them from dreams. But I think the easiest place to get a business idea is to look around yourself, around the community and ask questions. Problems are opportunities for business. Mm. Yeah, that's very true. And uh, that's one. Mm. Problems, wherever there are problems, there's a business opportunity. Mm. It could be water. It could be cleaning shoes. It could be cleaning houses. Mm. Uh, it could be transporting people. It could be anything that is a problem you can solve, whether a short-term or a long-term problem. Mm. Whatever there's a problem. And human beings, human beings are almost have... Um, Human beings and problems will never separate. Yeah. Whether they're human beings, there's always going to be a problem. Yeah. It's food, mm. it's clothes, it's everything you need uh, in a society, mm. plus some more. Mm. But also, number two, don't isolate yourself. Mm. Uh, there is a problem in Rwanda that says, umutumwe wijira. umutumwe something like that. Yeah, huh? yeah. One head, usually, all it does is help you go mad. You yeah. can think yourself uh, through madness, mm. but uh, work together with friends, colleagues, seek help, and I know you, mm. you have what it takes to, 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 to create whatever you want to create. Mm. Yes, definitely. That's very true. That's, I mean, that's, that's very true. And coming back to the problems you're referring to, there is this 
pastor of mine, he always tells us that don't argue with problems. <laughs> Do not complain about problems. Yes, yes, yes. You found them here mm -hmm. and you leave them. Even those who came in this world before you, Absolutely. they met them Absolutely. and they left them. Yeah. And you also find that even those that will come after you will, of course, That's face right. those problems. Right. But as, he just, as Jean just said, mm -hmm. You don't have to see problems as problems. You can turn opportunities mm -hmm. out of those problems and specifically <clears throat> business opportunities. Absolutely. Then there are, there, there are people out here, especially the youth, because mm -hmm. most of our audience are youth, mm -hmm. who think that to be, to get that good employment, to be that, I mean, to make it in life business-wise, you have to be, let's say, having these grades, these papers, these masters, and so forth. Do you agree with that? Can I be, mm. let's say, a graduate, maybe um, bachelor's, or even secondary, and still make it in business? Mm. Good question. Very good question. So, so education is extremely important. Let mm. me state that. Education mm. is extremely important. Mm. We can't downplay the importance of education because I think uh, opportunities in life and uh, they meet you ready, you know, you get ready, mm. and opportunities come, mm. you know. Sometimes opportunities come and you're not ready, mm. okay? Mm. Sometimes you're ready, and, but you're still waiting for an opportunity mm. uh, or even create one for yourself. Mm. Now, most entrepreneurs, mm. uh, most people selling, uh, the shopkeeper mm. in your quartier around, uh, around your house, uh, most of them in Yabugogo, most of these people moving around in trucks, and mm. never went to university. Mm. Most of them never went, never, most of them never went to university. Mm. And they started off even with very little communication skills, mm. which is extremely important in every aspect of life. Definitely. Uh, they didn't have strong numerical skills. Uh, you know, mm. never went to an accounting school, mm. never studied finance, uh, you, really, maybe even poor in math. Mm. so on and so forth. But there are two key things. In fact, most celebrities we adore today, most celebrities that we admire and uh, you know, look up to, whether they're abroad or even here, mm. most of them don't have a college degree. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. And so a college degree comes with opportunities. It's a tool uh, that comes with opportunities. But what is even more important than the paper are the skills that you acquire in school. Mm. And those same skills you, you acquire in school, you can acquire the same skills even outside of school. Mm. I remember, well, I would say most, most of the work that I've done, mm. most of the work that I do even now, mm. most of the things I get paid for, mm. I didn't learn them at university, mm. you know? But uh, these are skills I've learned by by applying, by, 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 by trying things. Mm. Join a company if you join a company, and you take on responsibilities. Mm. You learn one thing or two. You start a company, mm. and you realize you can't do everything. You need La Vie, mm. because he has a skill you don't have. Mm. That's, that's an important thing to consider. As you start earlier, you're trying to, to get resources and buy a few equipments and, and put yourself together. But the next step now is to realize you will never be able to do everything yourself. Otherwise, the company will never grow. The business will never grow. You can't accomplish anything by yourself. Even Jesus had to, even look Jesus had to, to, to look for disciples, yeah. you know. Mm. That's how amazing. The man who walked on water mm. and raised the dead, he still needed a group of people to, to implement his mission mm. and yeah. vision. So mm. same thing applies to you. Same thing applies to you. Mm. Don't wait to learn everything you need to learn mm. before you start. Because mm. you would wait until Jesus comes. Until the Lord comes or until, you know, until this earth uh, <laughs> comes to an end. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. So now as we head to the conclusion of our show, maybe the departing words, mm -hmm. there are people, this show has been uh, not only talking about breaking the addiction, not only taking responsibility mm -hmm. and of course initiative in breaking the addiction, but also taking responsibility and initiative in creating your own business. Absolutely. I mean, getting that job done, mm -hmm. not being that dormant, and of mm -hmm. course. And I wanted to ask, mm -hmm. which message, as we conclude, can you give to these young people, or even not that mm -hmm. young? Mm -hmm. But of course, when we talk about young, <laughs> it depends on who you're comparing mm -hmm. with. I might be younger than you, but you're also younger too. <laughs> yeah, to somebody, yeah, right. So right. Which, which departing words can you give to these people who have taken responsibility, who have mm -hmm. taken initiative mm -hmm. of one? 
breaking the addiction, mm -hmm. and second, of creating a business of their own and not being dormant, but they are facing challenges along the way. Mm. Which message can you give to those two groups of people? Mm. So to both groups, I would say be strong. Mm. Be strong. Um, be strong. That is a message that uh, the great Moses gave to his follower, mm. Joshua. Yes. He was departing. He told, he says, be strong mm. and of good courage. Mm. So in life, there's a, there's a lot of challenges in every area, in relationships at home, mm. in relationships at work, mm. in, uh, even in, with your own health. Mm. You, I mean, there, there, there are problems everywhere. Mm. But one thing I can assure you, you're not alone. You're not alone, and you have what it takes. You have what it takes to pull off the goal, to achieve the goal or the objective you set for yourself. Mm. Now remember, there is no such thing as a one soldier army. If it's one soldier, it's not an army. Mm. And one soldier cannot bring a war to an end. Mm. So partner with other people. Mm. Work with others. Mm. There are like-minded people, people who are going the same way you're going. Mm. There are peers, people who are a few years ahead of you, mm. who've um, accomplished what you've done, or maybe they are 50% halfway mm. towards what you're looking to, to accomplish. Mm. I would encourage you, stay strong. Mm. Don't give up. Mm. And please, 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 knock. It shall be opened. Mm. Call, somebody will answer. Yes. That's the parting message. Thank you very much, Jean Macara. Maybe for those who just tuned in, the takeaways from this uh, Jean Macara who like really explained everything, who went through everything, maybe the takeaways that one can get out of our discussion today is to first of all accept your, I mean, your current situation. If you're fighting addiction, if you're fighting uh, unemployment, or if you're fighting anything of the sort, accept your situation. And then secondly, don't think that it's the end of the world. It's not the end. And then third, take initiative. Take respons responsibility. You're the first one to recover. You're the first one to like, get that thing out of the way. And then fourth, seek support. Seek support from anyone that you may think is of great importance to help you achieve that uh, addiction-free life and, of course, that um, self-sustainability business-wise. Thank you very much, Jean Makara, for accepting our invitation. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And I think next time when we invite you, shall, of course, on our invitation. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Without a doubt, yeah. Thanks. Yes. Uh, Thank you, too, for tuning in. Those of you who've uh, followed us uh, since the start of the show, uh, up to now. And those of you who just tuned in, I want to let you know that uh, this show, you can find it on uh, Papa's Rwanda show on YouTube. And of course, visit our several social media uh, platforms. By that, I mean Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find these shows that have passed, even those previous ones. Until next time, I am Levi Mutangachuro. Have a great time. Mm -hmm.